Yep. Uh, but speaking of the defense, Amik Robertson's a part of that defense, and he's had a little issue with what people have been saying about him. I mean, come on. He, he says, dog, y'all need to bur- uh, bury this debt player shit. <laughs> There's no T, so it's she. Ella will stop playing with Love me. That. Y'all gonna see uh, y'all y'all gonna uh, go and see though. Keep that same energy. I don't know. By the way, do, do we do this? I don't think we called him a dead player. And I was immediately thought of that, I, I thought about that. Like, no, I don't. I don't think it was us. Who's calling this man a dead player? Do you want me to be honest? I mean, technically, he kind of is, but that's not. A, that's a whole other thing. I was saying, do you want me to be honest, or do you want me to, like? Is he watching? You know, can I just say this? There, there, and this frustrates me in the NFL. Is people are so obsessed with who's starting, and I understand it. It matters yeah. starting who's starting at corner and all that stuff. If you're playing significant snaps, who cares? Like, who cares? You don't think Amik Robertson's going to play a lot of snaps? Yeah, he will. So I, I don't know how the if you watch it was someone that said something specifically about him, but you have Carlton Davis, who's a legit CB1. Terry on you drafted to be your CB2. Amik, if, you, if he plays in the slot, great, but you, you, you would assume Brian Branch is out there. He's going to come in a lot and play. So I'm not even worried about like the depth piece stuff. I, I actually love this. I think it speaks to a Meek Robinson's mindset and he's just a dog and he's going to, he's going to work even harder to get it, to get kind of get after it. So I appreciate that, that mindset of like, okay, people call me a depth piece, you know, he's going to go harder. Um, so I love that, but you know, I, I think depth, the term depth piece Spooner gets like, you know, we're not talking about, um, you know, <coughs> Some like in the NBA, like a, a like a tenth man on the bench. Like we're, right. we're talking about a contributor. If we're just, I mean, I can just be honest here. I'll just say how it is. I don't know if Emik Robertson watches our show. I think the way we've talked about it and 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 what the truth is, I think the whole secondary is is it, the whole corner room right now is just depth and like every single every single like conversation and and, and uh, interview that has came out from Carlton Davis, Terion Arnold, Amik Robertson, Enos Rakestraw, like every single interview that came out near mini camps of him Jeff or of any of these guys all they talk about is the is how competitive it is in that in that room. So I don't know if there's like anyone that's like oh he's the number 1, he's the number 2, he's the number 3, he's a 4, 5, 6. I think right now it's just like we have such a deep corner room right now. All these guys are competing. I don't like you said, like my first initial thought, exactly what you said. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing if you're depth. And I don't think I think Carlton Davis is a part of the depth. Terion is Amik Robertson. Like all of these guys are a part of your depth. And there's going to be rotations. There's going to be guys that get hurt. Like there's going to be different scenarios that I'm sure AG is going to try out different guys at different spots. Like I don't see right now they're being like, hey, this is like Amik Robertson is just a great depth guy if someone goes down. Like, no, he's going to find out. He's going to be on the field at some point. He he proved it in Las Vegas when he was their corner one for a little bit. When guys get hurt, he steps up and he's dominated. Like, and then he he there's a reason why he got signed. Like, I, I just think it's like go out there and compete. Like, don't even think about like the depth there. I do like that he tweeted that out and he's like, I like the mindset, but I also the the other side of things. It's just like, who cares about that? Like, go out there and prove that you're more than that. That's how I look at it. Yeah, if Amik Robertson was on this team last year, he'd be their number one corner. I mean, yeah. So it's not that it's not a it's not a discussion of skill. We know he's very talented. I mean, I talk about it all the all the time, and I mentioned it before. The most the the, the player I'm most excited to see is Amik Robertson in the secondary because I just want to know more about him. I mean, we saw him with the Raiders, and he was really good for them. But I think he's kind of a do it all DB, and and he's the type of DB that Aaron Glenn absolutely loves. Yeah. So I think Amik with the Lions is a perfect fit. Uh, again, they have a lot of talent. So to your point, like there, there's going to be a lot of guys that play. I mean, you're you're going to see a lot of players out there. Um, and there's going to be different packages that AG has where it allows more DBs on the field and Amik will be out there more. So I'm not a, a, as concerned, and I don't think Amik should be with the whole depth piece thing. Like if you're playing significant snaps, like you're, you're fine. And, and could he could he be out Terry on Arnold? I don't think so. Um, but uh, again, that he's going to the job, they're going to compete. So I think the good thing for him is that he, he's like the Swiss army knife of that, of that room. Absolutely. Like he, and, and the not. reason, yeah. And it's not just like, like, but it's like that he's gone out there in the NFL and he's kind of a story that had to kind of go out there and prove it and earn it the last couple of years in his career to kind of get his career going. And he's played all these different, these different spots in, in, in the secondary to where now you come in and, and he has an advantage over a lot of different players. I feel like to where he's able to be a Swiss army knife and he needs to go in the nickel. He can do that. If he needs to go outside, he can do that. Like he can do everything. And that's where I think for him, it benefits him over a couple other guys because he's able to go out there and do that. And I think he's going to end up being on the field. And I think I mentioned it once. I said him and Terion. Terion, obviously, because of the Brian Branch thing, like Brian Branch coming from Bama, 
Last year, we knew, like, you can't keep this guy off the field. I think Tarion's going to get to that point. I think Amig Robertson might end up being one of those guys that, like, he's a Dan Campbell in, in like, AG type of player. Like, he goes out there, and all he's going to do is compete. He's going to talk, and he's going to let people know, and he's going to, like, go out there and dominate. And it's like, dude, those are hard guys to keep off the field. Like, those are hard guys for, for AG to say, hey, we need to get you off the field. So I think there's going to be a spot for him. That's why I, I think we we said it when we did our predictions. Um, we did our, our, our secondary predictions. I think all of us had Amik Robertson in there, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, I think I we did. moved Brian Branch to safety and we put Amik. I'm pretty sure we did. I I had Brian in, in the in the slot, even though you went, he, I and Kirby. Luke, Lucas did. Lu, I know what, Lucas okay. for sure did. He for sure had a meek in the slot, or he had uh, maybe Ennis, but he didn't have Brian in the slot. That's all I remember. Um, I I just think you have to put Brian back in the slot. Pers I mean, I he was so good for them. Yeah, uh, and I and I, and I just think for a guy with his skill set, his ability to tackle, you got to put him in the slot again. Like I think he should be playing nickel. Maybe, you know, Meek is so – he's you got to get him out there, so maybe you move Branch to safety. I understand that, but do you want to take Kirby? Like Kirby, I think just being out there affects the quarterback just because of yeah. his his ball skills. And if he's he, a ball hawk. So, like, that's why I struggled with it. Like, Meek was kind of the guy that I was like, okay, I think he'll be out there, but maybe not starting. I don't think I that's – I think they – AG's got a decision. Like, it's going to be yeah. interesting. It's going to be that's interesting. That's my take do. on it. Like, I think Brian's just too – I think he'd be a great safety. You could play him. I mean, he could play multiple positions, but I think yeah. in the slot, that's where he's most valuable against the, in the run game too. And Amik's good too, but I, Brian is just, I'm, we're just higher on Brian. I think we I, all are. So that's, I'm that's interested to see how fast Harry on Arnold ends up coming in and, and taking that. If yeah. he takes that CB two spot instantly, or if they're just, they're with a meek on it to start. That's I, I think the most interesting storyline when it comes to the corners. Yeah, because Amik played he, – he he played a little bit of both uh, for the Raiders. Um, I know in terms of the passer rating allowed, he allowed at 85.7. So he was actually he was actually pretty good for the Raiders. Um, I, I don't know – I don't have this, the numbers in front of me ver, for, from when he played in the slot versus played outside. Um, I would assume that with his size, he's probably better inside. But, again, that's why – I mean, when you have a guy like Brian Branch, it's like – I mean, Do you – do you think, and this is this is, I guess this might be a question for a guy like the doc, um, when he comes in, Emmanuel Mosley, coming off the double double yeah, ACL, he's kind like a, he's kind of a big question mark too. Like, what does he look like? I don't even know. Because this is a big what if, but what if he comes back fully healthy, looks like the old Emmanuel Mosley? Chances of that happening probably pretty low, pretty slim. Yeah. But if he does, then you're sitting there. You have you have a room, like you have like a. Here we go. We've got a legit corner room. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ryan, yeah, thank you for this, Ryan, by the way. He says he was better outside last year, Jeff. Yeah, and, and I remember that game he had it, uh, against the Chiefs. I think he was guarding Rasheed Rice, and he played really well. Um, so, yeah, Ryan is right. And man, it's going to be a battle. Maybe maybe Terion is the one that starts off a little slower. I don't know. I mean, week one. Training camp's going to tell a lot. With yeah, it will. That That's going to solve it all. I mean – and maybe maybe we're just assuming Carlton Davis is your CB one. Maybe he, I don't know. There's a lot of. Shit I, I think you have to assume Carlton's number one. <sighs> we'll see. I, I think he will be. But man, that, I think the secondary. There's a couple guys that are kind of in the same tier, in my opinion. That's why it's like, I don't know. Mike P just be, just became a Crunch member, so Mike. Shout P, out Mike P. It. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, Jay, that I'm, might be the most interesting battle of, of training camp. Is is the corner room like that? Yeah. Might when we go to training camp. Seeing the, that those corners go up against Ahmed Ra and Jamo and those guys, Khalif Raymond. All right, here mm -hmm. we go. Let's let's see who who's going to win this battle. And then you get Week One, Cobb and, and Nakua. Yeah, that's who who's, they're facing. Who, yeah, like who's got that? Who's got that matchup? Who's got those matchups?